Louis Vuitton bags, chewed up designer heels, damaged Chanel handbags, and worn out Gucci sneakers. These accessories have seen better days. We follow professionals as they restore nine luxury items. Our first expert is Rio Jungsae Kim from Kim's Shoe and Bag Repair. He shows us how he mends these $1,000 Gucci mules, making them look brand new. Hi, I'm Rio, and I'm the owner of Kim Su Shenbei Repair. Today, I'm doing a restoration on a pair of Gucci loafers that retail for around $1,000. One of my customers brought me her shoe that was beaten by her dog. The biggest problem with this shoe is that her dog chewed the toe area of the shoe, so the leather is completely cracked and broken. I'm going to repair broken leather on the toe area and also clean the shoe and refinish it. I'm wiping off the dust and debris from the shoe with a horsehair brush to prevent the shoe from any scratches by debris while cleaning the shoe. Now, I'm applying a leather adhesive to glue cracked leather pieces. I have to be careful when I'm gluing broken leather pieces not to make more damage on leather. I'm gently pressing the bite marks to glue the torn leather back onto the shoe and then slowly moving a roller over the leather to make them firmly attached. I'm taking some more amounts of the leather filler and gently spread the filler over the cracks with a pallet knife until the crack appeals filled. And then tilting the edge of the pallet knife sideways and gently scraping off the excess filler. Now I'm using a rotary tool to sand down the leather filler on the damaged surface until it gets smooth. When I use the rotary tool to sand down, I have to be careful about the control of pressing force. If I press too hard, it could dig the surface. I'm applying a leather cleaner with a soft horse hair brush to clean the shoe because it got dirty when the dog played with the shoe. I am mixing up leather paints to match the color of the shoe and then applying it with a quick paint brush to the repair area. Now, I'm applying a leather paint with an acrylic paint brush to repaint color faded edges of the shoe. I'm spraying waterproof spray onto the shoe to prevent the water from being observed.
I'm doing a restoration on a pair of Chanel Ballerina flats that retail for around $750. The heel plates have worn out, so now I'm taking off the older heel plates with an opener for the replacement. Now I'm sanding the leather bottom soles of the shoes to make them even and also roughen up the surface to enhance adhesion as I attach the leather soles with new rubber soles later. The bottom of the shoes have become worn out, so they need protection soles. I'm preparing new rubber soles and rubber heel plates. I'm drawing a line in pencil to mark where the new sole goes. The front soles have become detached, so now I'm applying a leather glue to reattach them. I'm using a glue brush to apply leather glue to the bottom of the shoes where the new rubber soles goes. I'm leaving shoes for around 20 minutes to dry the glue on the bottom of the shoes before I'm adding a second coat. Bottom soles are dried now, so I'm using a heat gun to warm up the both leather soles and rubber soles to adhere better. I'm using a hammer to press new soles onto the shoes. Now I'm cutting the edge of rubber soles and heel plates with a knife. And using a grind machine to trim the edge of shoes. I'm using a horsehair brush and suede brush to remove dust from the shoes. And I'm using a suede cleaner to clean the suede area with a suede cleaning brush. Especially, I have to be more careful with reviving suede the suede because the color was irregularly faded and some part of suede nap was missed. I'm brushing the shoes after cleaning them to reflop the suede pile. Now, I'm using a masking tape to cover non-suede area to avoid any damage from dyeing suede. I'm using a paintbrush to apply suede dye to suede area and doing this a couple of times. The leather on the shoes have become scuffed and faded, so I'm going to re-dye them. 
I'm using a black leather dye with a paintbrush to re-dye the leather. I'm using a leather paint to retouch up the edge of the shoes. I'm applying a finisher to leather toe box and leather sole edges to protect paint from minor scratches or scraps. Now I'm applying a waterproofing spray to protect shoes from water damage. Mink oil is a product made from the fatty layer under mink skins. It took a couple of days to complete the repair. Today I'm doing a restoration on a pair of Gucci Ace sneakers that retail for around $680. These shoes were brought by one of my clients. Unfortunately, they were not maintained well. There are three main things to be restored. First of all, the rubber soles are stained, so they need to be removed. Second, leather upper gets scuffed, so they need to be repainted and refinished. Lastly, metallic panel at the back is faded, so it needs to be retouched. I'm taking off the shoe races and insoles from the shoes. Now I'm using a toothbrush to remove the dust from the inside of the shoes before cleaning. Because this dust or sand can cause some scratches on leather while I'm cleaning. I'm using a leather cleaner with a soft hair brush and gently moving the brush in a circular motion to clean the interior and exterior of the shoes. Now I'm wiping off the foam and water quickly to avoid any water damage. The rubber soles are dirty and stained, so I'm brushing them to clean out the dirt first and using a thinner scrubbing of the stain with rag. Metallic green panel is originally made of leather and printed with metallic snake skin shape layer. When people try to wear the shoes, they tend to touch, hold, and bend the heel area. I'm using a leather glue with an awl to glue the peeled metallic back on. It's very hard to find the exactly same paint color to match the green metallic panel, since it's not even one solid color. I have to mix several paint colors to make the light and shade of metallic panel. The exterior of the shoes are scuffed and discolored some areas. So I'm using a leather paint to touch up the scuffed area first and applying evenly all over the shoes. I'm using a matte finisher to protect the paint from peeling off or cracks. Shoe races are not cleanable like the original condition, so I'm replacing with new ones. 
Now I'm applying shoe deodorizer to eliminate odor and keep fresh. I'm very excited for my client to see this restoration. I am Charlotte Stick and I'm co-founder and CEO of Handbag Clinic. Today, I'm going to walk you through how our artisan, Chloe, will restore this Grand Chopper tote that has had pen ink all over it. The Chanel Grand Chopper tote reached around £2,000 when it was able to be bought direct from Chanel. When this restoration is complete, we would sell a Grand Chopper tote for anywhere between £1,700 and £1,950. The first thing that Chloe will do with this item is remove all of the ink. The most important part of restoring this bag will actually be the initial cleaning because ink can spread and can create more staining. We use a special ink remover so you can see Chloe taking the ink remover with a small cotton bud and gently rolling this over the initial ink. This is so that we don't have any spreading, any further contamination of that ink to the bag. One of the main reasons for this is because ink is actually very oily and oil and leather really don't mix. We then also use a range of products. Some are solvent based, which will help to dry out any areas which have absorbed additional oils. And then we also use products which have natural oils embedded into them, which will then nourish areas that have dried, such as the corners um, or any areas where the ink has been drawn out of. We then use our specialist cleaning solution with the brush and a foam, which then will remove any excess product. Caviar skin leather is grained, so you need the brush to get into all of those grooves to be able to really make sure it's clean and make sure it's ready for the next stage of the process. Caviar leather, it gets its name from being a pedal texture leather, which means that it has printed into it this almost bubbles effect. If anything is trapped there or left in there, you would run the risk of that later peeling or coming away. Because it is ink that has contaminated this, the cleaning process alone will not remove this stain and we must apply other methods. In our research and development team, we realized that ink stains in particular were very stubborn. So we created a metallic solution, which actually blocks that coming through to make sure in a year's time, you're not gonna start seeing that ink stain come through. Chloe takes the specialist solution and she applies it lightly with an airbrush throughout every area where you can see the ink. Chloe will then create the colour match, which we have discussed with the client in advance. This colourant, once created, will then be airbrushed on this bag. We always want to be as sparing as possible to ensure the texture of the leather is maintained. Because of the iconic CC quilting and the CC on the front of the item, which makes this item the iconic Chanel look, we want to make sure as little pigment gets onto those stitches as possible. And the bag is ready to go.
my name is Artem Amirov. I'm the owner of uh, Royal Gloss Restoration Studio here in Russia and I'm the head restoration artist there. Today I'm going to walk you through how we restored this 42,000 Celine crocodile bag. It was made around eight years ago and uh, they were producing it for one year only. This makes it really rare. There was a huge uh, amount of problems on it. There was uh, scuffs and scratches all over the bag. The lining inside the bag was completely messed up. The bag was missing the puller for the zipper. We start with uh, removing the edge paint. All the edges of the bag have scuffs and scratches. We use the grinder to sand it down. We begin with uh, disassembling the bag. The inner lining had a lot of scratches from active use as well it had some dirt stains. To clean and fix it, the inner lining we had to pull apart all the bag. The tools that we used were a seam ripper and a cobbler knife. The seam ripper is more preferred for delicate parts of the bag. We carefully slide under the stitch and pull the stitch upward to get it out. The original lining for Celine Crocodile bag is made of sheepskin. We also use sheepskin with the same quality, with the same color and the same softness. After we carefully took off all the sheepskin linings from each side of the back, we replaced them with the new ones. To cut the new lining out, we use a rotary cutter. The glue that we use is the same that the manufacturer used. It has a very strong bonding. In order to make a new zipper for a bag, we use the new zipper. We use new leather. We choose a pattern to match the original scales and we paint it the same color as the bag. In order to clean the handbag, we use a special leather shampoo and a semi-soft brush. When we talk about cleaning the crocodile skin, it is difficult because you can damage the patina. Even with a mild cleaner, you can just wipe it out. One of the biggest concerns is the scales which cracked on the handle. If it's not prevented in time, later it will be very difficult to repair them. It's also had greasy stains on it, so in order to remove the stains and for a paint to penetrate through the handle and to have a bond with the surface, we need to use acetone to remove the greasy stains. Applying an edge paint coat is essential part to keep all the edges sealed and prevent the bag from further moisture penetration. To apply the edge paint we use a special roller pen. It grabs a certain amount of edge paint and allows to allocate it to the edges. In order to color match I'm testing colors on separate crocodile leather skin. I am trying to mimic the fading that goes from the center to the edges, from blue to dark blue and then to the black. It gives the back a very unique look. In order to apply the paint I am using airbrush and small spray gun. Working with them allows me to accurately distribute paint all over the surface. We use water-based paints, which will cover up all the defects. These kinds of paints have a great adhesion properties. We 
we had two types of sewing machines to get the same all stitch holes. We regulate the length between the holes. One of the sewing machines was uh, primarily used to sew the thickest part of the letter. We had to be careful with uh, assembling the back, back together because while assembling all the sides of the back we had to consider the thickness of the leather layers so they won't move during the sewing process. For some parts we did a hand sewing to avoid damaging the crocodile leather. My name is Tom Rago, and I am the co-owner of Rago Brothers Shoe and Leather Repair with my brother, Tony Rago. And today I am going to walk you through a dog chewed Louboutin shoe. Approximate cost is $800 to $1,000. When they came into us, the platform was halfway chewed off. The top of the shoe wasn't there and the heels were all chewed, all had bite marks on it. And you would think that this was an unrepairable shoe. We are going to attempt to rebuild the platform of this shoe, the upper part, the black patent leather, and get the structure back to the shoe. To start out the process, we are going to give this to our repairman, Ronnie, who is going to put this shoe together. We are using the heat gun to remove the platform very carefully trying to loosen the glue between the shoe and the platform. We now are putting the platform down on the table and taking a piece of bonded leather and tracing out the platform so that we can make a mold for the other shoe. What that involved is flipping the platform over so it looked like a left shoe instead of the right shoe. So we did that. We took our measurements. Once we've got that pattern, we now are taking a hard piece of rubber and we are shaping that with a Dremel to match the other platform. The platform, when you get it from Louboutin, it's a molded plastic base. Molded plastic is not available to us, so we cut it out of a very rigid piece of rubber. And we had to sand it to make the exact curves that it needed to have to fit the upper part of the shoe. When you start with the upper part of the shoe, you take a flat piece of patent leather and you take the inside material, which is a bonded leather, that gives it the structure, that gives it the form. What we're doing now is we're heating up the leather on the platform so that we can stretch it, make it more malleable, so that it has no creases in it. And then we pull it and attach it to the platform. So now we have the top shape of the shoe. After we've gotten that, we begin to form it to the platform underneath. We have to mold that platform around the top of the shoe. And that requires us using a hand Dremel to get the shape of the platform to fit onto the upper part of the shoe. 
that's just trial and error that you may go through that several times. So now that we've repaired the upper part of the shoe, we're going to take the platform and attach the platform to the upper part of the shoe. Now we are going to give the shoe to our shoe repairman, Henry, so that he can attach the leather and rubber sole to the bottom of the shoe. Now what we're doing is we're attaching the red sole onto the bottom of the shoe. We are going to take this shoe and we are going to edge it with black paint so that from the side of the shoe, all you see is the black. You won't see any red. This shoe was really a challenge for us and we think it came out really great. We think that when the owner does get this shoe back, her mouth is gonna drop. My name is Jerry Gallagher, master leather craftsman and founder of Leather Surgeons. Today we have a black caviar Chanel classic flak jumbo bag that's been severely damaged by an incandescent light bulb. We had this customer reach out to us. She did a closet restoration actually, and um, somehow an incandescent light bulb from a contractor burned its way clear through her handbag, through the outer flap, or through the lining. But what I'm gonna try to do here is just graft new leather over the damaged area and preserve as much of the original part of the bag as I possibly can. I'm going to start by opening up all the stitches around the front flap of the back. We're going to use a sewing awl and a really sharp knife to be able to just, you know, get in between the lining of the bag and the shell of the bag without causing any damage. I like to pull out the stitches one at a time because eventually when we stitch this bag back together, we're gonna have to stitch in the same exact holes that the manufacturer stitched in the first time. I'm going to open up the two gusset tacks so that we could access the interior lining of the bag between the shell and the lining of the bag and see just how much we need to do as far as replacing the internals. The burn went completely through the outer shell and through the interior lining of the bag. For the most challenging part of this job, we have the damaged area in the lower right quadrant. So it would be much easier for me to take the front panel off and just recreate the front panel. But what I'd like to do is preserve as much of the front panel of the bag as I possibly can and just replace the part that's damaged. So I'm gonna take my knife and I'm gonna very carefully skive off, which means cut away the existing leather that's burned or damaged. I'm gonna make a little pattern and I'm gonna replace that piece of leather I use a pattern to cut the size of the front panel and make sure it's 100% accurate. Because the bag was so severely damaged and it was burned completely through and actually clear through the interior lining, I'm gonna cut fresh lining panels 
We have patterns already pre-cut for this particular bag. The interior lining of the bag is made of goat, so we replace it with goat. As far as Chanel, this bag is Chanel caviar leather, which we also stock. We're able to replace everything about this bag exactly the way it was done the first time. I'm gonna take that piece of caviar leather and I'm gonna hand skive it, which means shave it down. If I skive the leather paper thin and I lay it right along that line, when I drop my new stitch over that seam, there'll be a zero transition between what was there before and what we have now. It should completely disappear. I'm gonna lie and cement that piece of leather right over that seam. This is a traditional leather contact cement, so you need to apply the cement to both surfaces, give it a minute or two to set, and then press the pieces together. When you're doing a restoration and you want to put the stitch back in the stitch hole that was there before, you need to aim the needle for the hole. So when I re-quilt this leather, any stitches that are visible, I have to make sure I drop the stitch in the same exact hole. It's just a question of measuring everything out because the flap quilting has to match the body of the bag quilting. When you close that bag, all of those seams should line up. Now we're gonna unweave the leather of the chain. This customer felt that the patina on the gold was starting to fade a little bit, so we replayed the metal. Then I'm going to reweave that leather through the chain and stitch the two ends. I feel really good about what we did here today. We took a bag that would have otherwise been trashed and we gave it a new lease on life. I'm Talene Kopian, co-founder of Purse Rehab. We are a designer handbag and leather goods restoration company. Today I'm going to walk you through how my team restores a burnt Louis Vuitton Neverfull bag. This is the Damier Abin Neverfull print. It's their top selling bag today. This bag is about $2,000 depending on the size. Unfortunately, the bag was left by accident on a burning electric stovetop. So the entire base is basically burnt, uh, along with the piping and the side of the bag is also burnt. To start, we're gonna unstitch the base. And in order to do that, we're using a round awl to remove the stitching and remove the piping as well. We're gonna clean off some of the debris here using a soft bristle brush. This is a coated canvas bag. Basically, coated canvas is cotton that's coated with polyvinyl chloride. So that's why you have that black color and the hardness of the canvas. Now we are drawing the template using the base that we removed. And we are using cowhide leather. This is premium leather that matches the existing trim on the bag. We're going to also skive the base at the edges. Skiving is essentially shaving down the leather and it's usually done at the edges so that they're easily foldable or stitchable. 
To match the interior red canvas of the bag, we are cutting a new piece of red material to glue on and stitch onto the base so that the interior is fully compatible with the existing lining. And it's very much like the Louis Vuitton material. We have to make a new piping to add to the base. This is made out of the same leather and so we cut out the piping and glue it onto the base. And in addition to gluing it, we will also be stitching the piping so that it's double reinforcement. Simply gluing it isn't going to give it that extra strength that it needs because it is a base, so it's a stress point on the bag. In addition to making the base, we are going to recreate the burnt piece that's on the side of the bag. We are using recycled Louis Vuitton material that's in the Damier Abin print so that it looks more seamless and it blends in nicely with the bag. We try to align the pattern on the bag first visually to make sure that we can make it fit. Once we cut it, we are going to glue it onto the um, canvas and also stitch it. And once the recycled piece is on the bag, we're going to trim off the excess burnt portion that's underneath the bag. Once we've completed the preparation of the new base, it's time to put it on the bag. First, we glue it onto the bag using leather glue, and then we are stapling the base onto the body of the bag. It's a unique feature that our craftsmen use here so that when we're stitching it together, it's solid and it doesn't move. Once we're done stitching the base onto the bag, we are removing the staples using a round tipped staple remover, which does not damage the canvas or the leather. Once we're done with the structural issues and the repairs on the bag, we're cleaning it using a mild cleaner to revitalize and condition the canvas. It would have been impossible for us to match the exact same pattern and material. We did our best to come up with a solution that does blend well with the bag and makes it usable in the long run. And that essentially was our client's goal. My name's Freya Bass and I own Bags Amore, a handbag restoration company in Sydney, Australia. Today I'm going to walk you through how I restore a $4,000 Chanel vanity case. Typical of a bag of this age, the lining is disintegrating as it is a coated fabric. We also have wear and tear to the outer corners. This bag was purchased 10 years ago for $1,500 US dollars. It is today worth between $3,000 and $5,000, so in its restored state it will be worth more towards $5,000. To begin the process I'm going to remove the strap from the bag, so I'm going to do this using some small pliers to gently remove the chain from the link. The strap is very worn, so there is colour wear, dirt build up and the metalwork is tarnished. I'm then going to take a quick unpip and undo the stitches at the end of the chain. I now need to unthread the leather through the chain so that it's completely separated from the metalwork. Now I've fully removed the leather from the chain, I'm going to clean the strap. So the leather strap will just be cleaned initially with foam cleaner. So I'm doing this with a horsehair hide brush which is nice and gentle to get into the grain of the leather. And then I'm going to continue this process throughout the exterior of the bag. So I'm just applying foam cleaner to the bag surface doing one panel at a time. I'm gently massaging the foam into the grain of the leather. 
It is always important to clean the bag before applying pigment. This will mean that the pigments will bond to the leather better. If there's anything left on the surface of the bag, such as silicones from protector sprays or day-to-day -day dirt buildup, this could hinder the bonding process. Now I'm going to clean the interior of the bag. I just need to clean as much of the debris away as possible. So I'm using a much more gentle cleaner here, which is like a, a luxury leather cleaner. So it's a water-based cleaner, and I'm basically just gonna gently wipe inside the lining. This has to be done really gently as if any pressure is put on, or if a product that was incorrect was used, it will then start to remove even more of the lining. We need to preserve as much of the original liner as possible to make the job easier in the restoring stage. Now we've fully cleaned the bag inside and out, I'm going to move over to the repair process. The interior of the bag is disintegrating. This is quite common with this age bag as it was made from a coated fabric. Over time and due to humidity, the surface of the lining will start to crumble and come away. We need to restore the lining as close to the original as possible, so we're going to rebuild the surface using fillers and pigments. So here I'm going to use a flexible filler. This filler moves with the surface of the leather or fabric. So I'm just going to apply this using a very soft and small paintbrush so I can get a nice even surface across the whole interior lining. The idea is to restore the original and avoid having to replace something like this. This means we retain the original Chanel logo. I'm going to do this very slowly to make sure that I get a good even coverage all the way around. I'm going to start using the filler along the top rim and then work my way down into the main crevices of the lining. Once applied, this filler needs 24 hours to cure. Now I've left the filler for 24 hours, I'm sanding down the surface, so this is to remove any sort of bits of grain or lumps or bumps and try and get a smooth finish. I'm just going to start sanding around the top really gently. I'm using a very fine sandpaper so it doesn't grab or wear down the surface of the original lining. And I'm then going to wipe over with some alcohol. This will remove any of the surface dust that has been created from the sandpaper and then it will also slightly soften the filler to help it smooth and blend into the original surface of the lining. So before airbrushing I'm just going to remove the CC lock hardware. This makes it much easier to get an even coat around the lock. I'm just going to unscrew this with a small flathead screwdriver. Once I've removed that, I'm going to tape up the remaining hardware on the bag. So now I'm just going to move on to mixing a colour for the bag. I custom mix every colour by eye, so I tend to use about three or four paints um, to mix each colour. So here I'm using caramel, gold yellow and citron. I'm mixing these together and I'm just going to test the colour on a small area on the bag to make sure it matches. This can take a few attempts sometimes, just to make sure that the colour is absolutely spot on. Now I've got my colour and I'm good to go, I'm just going to pop it into an airbrush. If I use the airbrush as it allows me to create lots of fine coats of pigment, rather than painting it on, which would go on too thick. It's really important not to too heavily coat a bag with paints, pigments and fillers. Less is always more, so we still want to preserve the original look and feel of the bag. I'm just going to work my way around each section of the bag, concentrating on the areas that have more wear. Now I've managed to get a nice coat of pigment over all of the bag, I'm then going to use a finish. A finish is a clear coat sealant which goes on top of the pigment to protect it from wear and tear. Here I've mixed about two thirds high gloss to a third matte to get a nice satin sheen which reflects the original leather. I'm just going to airbrush this finish over the whole bag and then leave it to dry. Now moving on to the leather in the strap, I'm actually going to paint this on with a paintbrush so as not to have too much wasted paint. So I'm just going to run 
all the way along the strap with one coat, leave it to dry and then repeat the process. I am then going to finish this off again with airbrushing the finish for a nice even layer across the whole strap. Now I'm going to move on to the lining. I'm going to take my paintbrush and paint in over all of the areas where the surface had chipped away. This may take a few coats as it was shown white underneath but I need to rebuild the colour back up to match the surface lining. Once I've done that, I'm going to apply a finish. Due to the severity of the condition of this lining, there will still remain a few imperfections, but what we have done is we sealed and recoated the surface, so this will prevent any further damage from happening and give this handbag a new lease on life. Now that I've completed all of the airbrushing, I am now going to polish the hardware. Here I'm going to use a fine grey metal polish to just gently polish the surface of the metal. This will remove any of the tarnishing. As I'm doing so, you can see the dark colour of the tarnished metal work coming off onto the cotton bud. I'm going to polish all the links on the strap to bring them up to a nice shiny gold. Now all the colour work is done, I'm going to reattach the strap. I'm going to firstly re-thread the leather through the strap. It's really important that you align the leather up properly so that you get the same amount each end. I am now using the pliers to reattach the chain to the bag. Now I need to stitch the leather back together through the original holes. I'm taking some matching colour thread and using a very fine needle so I can get through the original holes. It's really important to go through the original holes as if you make a new hole in leather, there's no way of reversing that without then going through another repair process. I'm just gonna secure the couple of stitches and then tie it in on itself to keep it neat. And now I just need to thread the end back through the leather and then secure it with a little bit of glue just like it was originally done so. And now I'm going to apply a leather protector to the surface of the leather this will protect the bag from dye transfer from jeans, UV damage and liquid and oil staining. It's really important to protect your leather bags for future wear and tear. I'm really happy how the restoration of this bag turned out. The interior is now ready to be worn and the lining is all fixed up. The outside is no longer showing any signs of wear and tear and the gold hardware is looking nice and shiny. I think my customer is going to be really pleased with the outcome.